in the previous video we looked at the cost diagram and we looked at how to reduce sin cos and tan functions that matched the cost diagram perfectly for example we looked at we looked at questions such as the following you would typically have been given something such as the tan of 360 minus x what we then did is we looked and saw if 360 minus x was on the cost diagram then we saw that it was over there and so we could say tan x and then what we would do is just see if tan is positive or negative in that quadrant and because that is a cos quadrant tan was negative we also looked at questions that didn't perfectly match the cost diagram such as the tan of 540 minus x but then what we did with questions like that was we simply minus 360 degrees because mathematically if you minus 360 you would still be at the same place on the cost diagram we then simplified that and we ended up with 180 minus x and then we knew what to do with that because it was on the cost diagram and so we could reduce it in all of the questions we typically had in the brackets we had a number as well as a letter such as x in the next questions we're just going to be given a number and we're going to have to try and simplify that number and I'm going to show you how that works so I'm going to use two different questions to show you an example and I'm going to compare what we did in the previous video and what we're going to do now so in the previous video you would end up with something like the tan of 180 plus x in this video we're going to give you tan of 200 for example now in the previous video step one if you had to reduce this was to locate this on the diagram and so we'll do the same for this tan 200 of course 200 can't be seen on the diagram but you got to ask yourself where would the 200 degrees be located well if we remember that the zero degrees started there on the right and then it went up to 90 degrees then to 180 then to 270 and then finally back to 360 the angle 200 would be somewhere in this quadrant and so what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the 200 so that it looks more like 180 plus x so we will start by saying 180 plus now what must you add to 180 to make 200 well that's just 20 all right so now what we can see is that this looks very similar to that over there and so we do the exact same from this point onwards what would the answer for this one have been you would have just said tan x and so for this one we'll just say tan 20 furthermore tan is positive in that quadrant and so we don't have to add any negatives and so this would be the answer for both of those examples so now on the next slide we're going to try a couple of these examples that only involve numbers just remember you simply have to work out which quadrant the angle is in and then rewrite the angle in a slightly different way because once you can rewrite it as something on the cost diagram then it's easy to reduce the first question starts off with the sin of 200 but first let me quickly put the cost diagram on this page so we can have a nice view of that and so with the sin of 200 what we do is we first try locate where the 200 degrees would be well that would be somewhere over here right between 180 and 270 so we know that if we want to reduce this angle very easily we should try rewrite the 200 in that type of as a, something with 180 plus okay so what we can do is then say that this is the same as 180 plus 20 because that does give you 200 and then we can think of this as the sin of 180 plus x now if that was the scenario you would have just given an answer of sin x and then because sin is negative in that quadrant you would have just put a negative so in the same way we will just treat this as negative sin 20 because remember x has just been replaced with 20 but x means 
any type of number x x is just a letter which represents it's a variable so it can have different values okay perfect so let's try the next example the next one is the sin of 340 so first thing is to locate where that is on the cast diagram or well, that would be somewhere over here so we will rewrite it as 360 minus now 360 minus what gives you 340 it's 360 minus 20 and so that just becomes the sin of 20 because remember if there was an x there you would have just said sin x and then because sin is negative in that quadrant this one will also have an answer of negative sin 20. number three says tan 300 and so we need to first see the 300. 300 degrees would also fall into this quadrant and so we rewrite it rewrite it as 360 minus and then what would you have to put over what number would you need so that the answer is 300 well that will be a 60. many people i've i've seen they want to they want to put a 300 in the place of the 60 but remember 300 tan 300 or this expression and this expression has to be the exact same thing we're just writing it in a slightly different way so that it matches the cast diagram and so as what we did in the previous videos the 60 would usually have been an X and so because it's on the cast diagram now you can just say whoops not tan X tan 60 and then because tan is negative in that quadrant you'll put a negative in the sin of 150 is the next one 150 would fall into this quadrant here and so we rewrite it using 180 minus now 180 minus what gives you 150 well that's minus 30. all right and then that just becomes sin 30 and because sin is positive in that quadrant the answer will stay positive number five is the tan of 730 sorry I was just going to rewrite that that's not necessary so now 730 is definitely not on this diagram but remember what are we always allowed to do we can if we would like well no we actually have to in this case minus 360 and so if we had to minus 360 you're going to end up with the tan of 370 which is still bigger than 360 so all we do is we minus another 360 and so that's going to give us the tan of 10. now 10 is already below 90 degrees and so we cannot reduce this any further because it doesn't fall into quadrant 2 it doesn't fall into quadrant 3 or 4 it falls into quadrant one and so it's actually it's been reduced as far as it can and so that is the answer for sin 500 we're going to have to first minus 360 degrees and if you do that you're going to end up with sin of 140 and now you can start the question from that so let me just erase all of these marks here there we go so sin of 140 well 140 would leave us in this quadrant over here and so we have to rewrite it as if it's in that quadrant so 180 minus what gives you 140 well that's 40 right and then if we remember what we did in the previous video that will just become sin of 40 okay and because sin is positive in that quadrant the answer will be positive Number seven is the tan of minus 100. Minus 100 is not on the cast diagram. Okay, with the tan of minus 100, minus 100 is not on the cast diagram. And so for this one, we're going to add 360. And so that's going to leave us with the tan of 260. Now, 260 would put us in this quadrant over here. And so we would re rewrite it as 180 plus something. Now 180 plus 80 gives you 260 and if you had to reduce that that will give you tan 80 and because tan is positive there we'll leave the answer as positive. The last question for this video is the sin of 100. 100 would put us in quadrant number 2 and so we will rewrite it as if it's in quadrant number 2 which is 180 minus something. 180 minus 80 gives you a hundred 
and so if you had to reduce that that's going to leave you with sin of 80. Certain angles appear quite often in trigonometry and so mathematicians have come up with two triangles which if memorized help you to speed up your calculations by not having to depend on the calculator when you end up with these kinds of angles. I personally find it very unnecessary to have to learn this but unfortunately the school system does expect you to know this and they can tell if you've used your calculator trust me it's very easy to tell because the calculator answer and the triangle answer often looks very different although mathematically their values are actually the same and teachers know this all right so what I would suggest to you is just to memorize the triangles they're very easy to memorize and then at least you've got them okay so here are the two triangles that you need to know and so here we have the two special triangles so as I said just memorize them and then you can use them in the exams I just want to quickly mention the reason we use them once again is because the angles 30, 60, 45 appear quite often in trigonometry and so mathematicians came up with a way to memorize them because obviously their calculators were very complicated back in the day and so this would have saved them time. And so in the next slide we're going to practice a few examples and see how to use them. Many times when you do reduction answer that you end up with is going to be a special triangle. So let's, so for example, if you have your cast diagram, and I'm going to put the cast diagram as well as the special triangles quickly. Let's start with number one. So remember what we did on the previous slide, we took something like the sin of 300 and we reduced that. And that's what we have to do first. So we need to know which quadrant it's in, which is the 360 minus quadrant. So we'll rewrite it as 360 minus 60 which then reduces to sin 60, and because sin is negative in that quadrant, we'll put a little negative in the front. But the point is, is that we're going to end up with a 60 degree. And so we go to the 60 degree triangle, and we use sin, because, because it's a 90 degree triangle, we can use sin, cos, and tan, where, if you remember from previous grades, sin is the... Okay, so different people use different things. Uh, one of the more popular ones I see is Sokotoa, but then I know some people who use Y, R, and X. So sin is opposite over hypotenuse or Y over R. So the opposite is the square root of 3 and the hypotenuse is 2. And so that whole answer will be minus the square root of 3 over 2. Notice how there was no calculator work involved because we have access to certain angles via the special angle triangles. The next one is cos minus 60. Now, minus 60 is not on the cost diagram. And so what we do is we add 360 to that. And if you do that, you would get the cos of 300. Then we need to see where 300 is. Well, 300 is in this quadrant over here. And so we could rewrite that as 360 minus 60 which then reduces to cos 60 and because cos is positive there the answer just stays cos 60. So we go to our special triangle where it's 60 degrees we know that cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and so that's going to leave us with the square root uh, um, not square root 1 over 2 and so the answer is a half. The next one is tan 210. 210 is located in this quadrant over here, in the third quadrant, and so we could rewrite 210 as 180 plus 30. We know that that can then reduce to tan 30, and tan is positive in that quadrant, and so it's tan 30. So we go to our special angle where we use the 30 degrees, and we start from we start from there. Sorry for the slight noise in the background. It's people cutting the lawn. So the tan of 30 is opposite, which is going to be the 1, over the, whoops, not that way, over the adjacent, which is the square root of 3. And so the answer will be, the, will be 1 over the square root of 3. The last one is the cos of 390. Now 390 is not on the cos diagram and so what we'd first do is we would minus 360 
and so that's going to give us the cos of 30 and so straight away that angle is reduced you don't need to go any further you just need to go locate the 30 on the special triangle and then use cos now cos is adjacent which is square root 3 over hypotenuse which is 2 and so the answer for that one will be the square root of 3 over 2. Sin and cos can complement each other. This is very important. It's a very simple concept, but I do see throughout the year people do start forgetting how to use this property and then get slightly confused. Okay, so all you need to know is that the sin of 20, for example, will be the same as the cos of 70. Now, that is simply because the sin I mean the two angles add up to 90 okay so we can come up with any combination we like cos 10 is the same as sin 80 it's not only true for these ones it's anything you like so the cos of I'm just gonna make some up 82 will be the same as the sin of 8 the sin of 71 is the same as the cos of 19 so any combination that adds up to 90 you can make them equal. Now this is especially useful if you are busy simplifying and let's say you have a cos 70 at the bottom and a sin 20, sorry a cos 70 at the top, a sin 20 at the bottom. Well remember those two are actually equal and so they can simply cancel out and so your answer would have equaled 1. Okay, so that's something very important to remember. That's going to be the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to try a couple of examples that combine everything we've learned thus far.